In this video, we're going to look at um, some uh, very important functional groups, uh, whether you're studying chemistry or even biology. Now, typically, when we're referring to functional groups, the general formula that we'll use is the letter R, right? and whatever the functional group happens to be. Right? So R pretty much refers to the alkyl uh, chain, right? So any uh, carbon-hydrogen bond. And then the functional group, right? And, and an example here, something like, um, like an alcohol, right? OH, right? So if we had this and we were to write a, um, a general formula for an alcohol uh, organic compound, right? We would, let's say, draw R attached to OH, which means the R represents some kind of alkyl group, right? So this, so a formula like this, like ROH, could represent something like, um, like this, could represent something like uh, this, um, right? It could uh, represent pretty much, oops, sorry could represent something like this, right? So all three of these can be simplified under this general formula. So what we're going to look at today are actually some of the functional groups that I will uh, cover in greater detail re with regards to nomenclature in, um, in, 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 in other videos. But this, we're just going to kind of look at just a, a generalization regarding functional groups, right? So think of some of the functional groups that I've already covered. Uh, we have pretty much things like uh, the ENE, right? The alkenes, right? The, the suffix like this. Uh, what that means is pretty much we have a double bond, right? Associated with it, right? We've come across um, the alkyne, right? right, which means that there is a triple bond associated with it, right? Uh, something like um, an, an OL in terms of the name, like propanol, right, means that at the end of the, the substance, we actually have some kind of a hydroxyl group, right? So this hydroxyl group being... Uh, an OH bonded um, to one of the, the carbons, right? And now when dealing with functional groups, right, it, it, what's, what's so important to know is that functional groups pretty much help generalize various compounds, right? So in terms of functional groups, right, ways to, to classify organic compounds in, in one of two ways, right? So compounds, right, that have pretty much the same functional group as one another, right? So pretty much anything with, with the same functional group uh, as one another have pretty much, functional group, have pretty much, um, pretty much the, have similar or, or have the same physical properties. Have similar but similar properties to one another, right? uh, and we're going to look at that uh, also in a future lesson. Second thing that pretty much uh, having the same uh, you know compounds that have the same functional groups pretty much also react chemically, right? Uh, similar. Right in 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 a very similar way. So they react chemically in, in a similar fashion, in a similar fashion. Right. So pretty much notice that 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 compounds that have these same groups, right? They they do have many chemical similarities to one another. And understanding this is what's going to help you understand. Um, and understanding these properties will help you understand why these compounds react the way they react. 
So let's um, just kind of outline a few of the uh, the functional groups that, that that we are going to outline, and, and just so you know, right? So we've already talked about um, right the alkenes and the alkynes, right? We've got the alkanes, right? These are our same functional groups, right? So if we're looking at the alkenes, right? We've got car double bonds between carbon. The alkynes have triple bonds between the carbons. The alkanes, all it is is just a bunch of carbon. So there, there really isn't a, a functional group in terms of one to remember when drawing. It's just pretty much we're looking at um, only hydrocarbons. Right? Only hydrocarbons uh, that, are, that have single bonds between the carbons. Um, other functional groups that um, that we, I've already uh, done a video for pretty much um, are the uh, the ketones. Right, ketones and they have the ending of O-N-E and ketones have a carbon uh, double bonded to an oxygen in the middle of some kind of R group and I'm gonna do this I'm gonna draw the R and an R prime and what that means is that we've got different type of alkyl groups that, that exist on both sides of the carbon another one of the ones that I've done uh, a video for uh, are aldehydes right and aldehydes pretty much end in a L and um, these aldehydes pretty much are at the end of a carbon bond or of a chain. So we have a carbon also double bonded to an oxygen. However, it is bonded to a hydrogen as opposed to another alkyl group. Uh, we've already uh, mentioned earlier the alcohol group. And these end in OL, right? And pretty much you're looking at something like pretty much a carbon single bonded to an OH, which we've got other, we can have an H or another methyl group, let's say on either end, but primarily we've got an OH found on, um, at the end or on uh, bonded to one of the carbons. Another one very important, especially in biology, pretty much are your amines, right? And your amine groups also end in amine, and pretty much we've got uh, carbon single bonded to a nitrogen, right? Um, and um, so, and like, as I said, it, with, with regards to uh, amino acids in biology, right, really important functional group. Uh, another functional group also with respect to, um, to biology um, when, when dealing with amino acids uh, are the carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acids. And their names end in oic acid. And typically, they too have the carbon double bonded to an oxygen, but single bonded to an OH group. Uh, another functional group are the uh, ester molecules, and these end in oit endings, like a methyl propanoate, right? And this typically very similar to the carboxylic acid. However, with this difference, right, the, car the carbon double bonded to an O is, um, is the same. The difference here is the O is not bonded to an H. In fact, it's bonded. It c it'll be typically found in the middle of um, your, uh, let's say, of your, you know, your organic compound. And the last one that we're going to look at are the amide. And the amides also end in amide ending like something like uh, propanamide right and like I said we're gonna look at these functional groups in a future video with regards to nomenclature what we have is again very common carbon double bonded to an oxygen but this time it's single bonded to a nitrogen and these are your functional groups 
that you're going to eventually need to know and we're going to go into uh, the nomenclature of them in a future video.